In this video, we're going to be taking a look at four motion design elements which can help take your animation to the next level. What's up everyone, I hope you're doing well. My name's Shul Gonsalves from Animation Deconstructed and if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn that notification bell so you know when I release new videos. Let's jump straight into the tutorial and this first part, we're going to be taking a look at adding color, gradients and texture to our backgrounds. I'm going to begin with a new composition, so let's just open that and I'm going to create it 1920 by 1080p, 30 frames per second and let's just make it a 5 second clip. The next thing I want to do is just right click new and create a solid and this can be any color. Now in motion graphics what is trending at the moment is solid colors, gradients and then also adding some textures to gradients as another option. And this is going nowhere pretty fast in 2021. So I'm going to come over to the effects and presets panel and I'm going to type in gradient and you want to find this gradient ramp and just double click this to add it to the layer. I'm going to change this to radial ramp and then I'm going to pick a dark blue. It's got pretty dark over there. And then I'm just going to pick that color so we can just choose a lighter variant. Just zoom in here so you can see more. Now, if you're seeing banding in your animations, just uh, take the ramp scatter up and you'll see this will smooth out your gradients on your background. Now, adding texture to this is pretty easy. We can just go to the effects, transitions, and I'm going to use a Venetian blind effect on this. And you can see as we drag up on the transition completion, we can actually create some textured lines on our background. I'm going to leave this at about 11 and I'm going to take the width down to let's say 14 and then I'm just going to change the angle to if you hold down shift you can get you can get 45 degree angle increments. In this next part we're going to be taking a look at getting comfortable with animation controls and using angles in our scenes. Okay let's add some text to our scenes so right click in the timeline panel new and text and I'm going to start typing motion and I'm going to use Futura and let's change that to bold. So to change the size here, I'm just going to scale this up. I have 171 on my side and then I'm going to duplicate this and just type in magic in caps. Then select your pointer tool and just move this below and we'll rescale this up. Two on two is good here so I'm going to move this down until I'm happy with it then I just want to change the color of this so I'm going to use a light orange so something like this and then I'm going to just turn on my title safe so I can see where the center of the scene is and let's just move this up so we can centralize our text and that looks pretty good you can also just turn the title safe off again now we want to animate this so I'm going to move over to about 20 frames, select both, press the P key and turn the stopwatch on to add a keyframe and I'm going to move to the beginning and I'm going to move these off and you want to keep these pretty much at the same kind of movement. So I'm going to move them right to the edge and then I'm going to move them slightly more. And what I want to achieve here is creating this kind of slow-mo effect as it comes to the middle. I don't want them to stop altogether, I want them to come in sort of like that matrix effect. So I'm going to shift and I'm going to press left on this one five times or let's make it six and then do the same on this side. Then I'm going to move over to one second and ten frames and let's just take it to the other side so I can drag this to the edge. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now the trick to this is if we press easy ease on this just bring in our work area and press play and you'll see this comes to an actual stop and then shoots off and I don't really want that so what I'm going to do is open the graph editor and you can see we have this McDonald's M kind of looking speed graph what we can do is just select the middle one and we're going to drag out to about the line over there and the line over there you want to create this kind of looping area here where almost comes to a stop and then it starts ramping up again in speed. I'm going to press spacebar and that looks a lot better. Now I want to add some angle to this so I'm going to right click create new 
null object and I'm going to parent both of these to the null object and then I'm going to select the null, press R and we're going to rotate this backwards. Just going to zoom out and move a bit forward so we can see these and then just rotate and press Ctrl to get more accurate rotation. Minus 29 is good in this case and let's just see how this looks. This all looks great but all good animations have something secondary happening around them. So we're going to be taking a look at creating some motion design shapes or elements to add to our animation. What I want to do is I want to create these motion elements or motion shapes in small compositions of their own. So I'm going to go down to the create composition and let's create them pretty big. So 600 by 600 and let's leave it at about two seconds. First one I want to work on is a starburst looking effect. So I'm going to come over to the title safe area and we're going to turn it back on just so we can see where the center of our composition is. And then I'm going to come over to the pen tool and I'm going to move up just slightly from the center and I'm going to click around here and I'm going to draw up to about there. Now I don't want any fill so if you need to just turn this off over here, come over to the stroke, make sure it's solid and change this to white. I'm also going to take this line down to about 12 points and I'm a bit happier with that. With our layer selected, press U twice to bring up all the attributes that have already been changed and I want to come over to add and we're going to add a repeater. Let's just drop down the repeater options and I want to come down to the transform controls as well. I want five copies of these and you can see they're moving over in position all the time and that is happening because it's over here. It's moving 100 pixels over to the right all the time and we can change this. I'm going to select zero so it doesn't move over. Change the copies to five and I want to rotate these around. So in order to create a perfect circle we just have to divide 360 by five and that will give us 72. The next thing I want to do, let's fill that up, we don't need it, um, is add a trim path to this shape. I'm going to drop that down and keyframe the start and end. And let's take both of them down to zero and I'm going to move forward to about 25 frames. And I want to change this end value to 100. So it's shooting out. And then we can do the same to the start, just drag this up. And I want to offset these by about four frames. So one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to select all of them, press F9 to easy ease them, bring up the graph editor, select these two and just pull them holding shift and you'll get them to lock. This is going to create, this is going to create a nice speed effect where it starts off fast and it ends quite slowly. Pressing the space bar just to see it. And that is pretty good. So let's just trim this comp down so that it's not as big. I'm going to come over and let's say around here, right click, trim comp to work area. Now we can rename this composition just to element one. And then I'm going to control D to duplicate this. So let's just double click this. And if everything's turned up, let's just press U twice just to get all our, all the elements that we've adjusted. And I want to make this a bit different on this option so I'm going to change the copies to 6 and then the rotation to 60. Then I want to add a circle to this animation so we can just close it down and I'm going to double click. Let's just come up here to the ellipse tool and then double click to add a circle. I'm going to press U twice and then we'll see the size over here. Let's change that to 270 and then I'm going to Come over to the stroke width. And this is what I want to be my end size. So let's move over to, I need to let these die off and come over to about here.
and take it down to zero over here again. Now we just need to ease these frames again. So select all of them, press F9 to easy ease. Just pull this until the first one locks. It will happen around there. Let's just see how this looks. The last thing I want to do is just move these start keyframes over to about three frames. And I'm pretty happy with that. Now in order to be able to go into our composition and change the colors, I like to set these to black and white so I can just use a tint effect to either change one of the colors or the other. So I'm going to go right click new solid and just choose a color that white and black will stand out on. And I'm just going to say guide and press OK. Drop this to the back, right click and call it a guide layer. And this means it won't show up in your composition, just helps us over here. I'm going to twirl this up, I'm going to select the circle and I'm going to type full, drop this on and make this black. Lastly, let's just reuse this, so I'm going to control D to duplicate this. Now going back to our animation, we can drop these in on, let's just drag this forward. And I want them to start coming in as, so it's around 20 frames. So an easy way to do this is to actually come to the timeline and hold shift and you'll see we can just lock it to that area, move this over and let's just scale this down. Let's do something like that. Place these around and then duplicate it, move it over, change the timeline. And I'm going to do this with a few of these and just place them all around and I'll get back to you right after I'm done. So I've added these in place and now we've got our white and black showing up. So let's just come over to the effects and presets, type in tint, double click this. And now I just want to change the black to this orange over here. I can copy this. If we just play through this, you can now see what's happening. And I want to select this one, paste this and swap the colors. The next one, I just want to, let's add a tint and we know we can change the white of this, just a circle pop. Just want to select a pink and press OK. And then just go ahead and make some changes to all the rest of these. And this is pretty much where I'm at. In this next part, we're going to be emphasizing the motion of our text by adding some glow and then also adding some motion lines to the scene. So as the text comes in, I want to emphasize the movement of this. By first of all, let's select our text, add some motion blur. Then I'm going to deselect everything, right click, new adjustment layer, move over to effects and presets, type in glow, add a glow effect to this. And about six frames, I'm gonna make sure this is on. So let's just adjust these settings. Drag up on the glow threshold, drag up on the radius. My settings are about 67 and 46 for threshold and radius. And then I'm going to duplicate this just to add a much larger one. I'm gonna take the threshold up right up to 100 and then really drag up on the glow radius. About 574 is on my side. And then I'm gonna change the adjustment layer to an additive mode to even get more out of this. Going to press the T key for opacity, turn it on at six frames, go to zero, take it down to zero opacity, and then let's move over to around 20 frames and just take this down to zero again. Select all the keyframes, press F9, and I'm pretty happy with that. The last thing I wanna do is add some motion lines, and the way we're going to do this is I'm going to create this in a separate composition. Again, I like to create these things so that I can reuse them in projects in the future. This is create a composition. Now we know our whole composition is 1920 by 1080p, but I want to make this a bit bigger so that I can create lines coming out from the sides. So I'm going to duplicate the width times two, just put a star in two, press tab, and it'll change that for you. And then I'm going to change the height to one six hundred should be plenty. My duration for this is around two seconds and press OK. And there's a few things I want to do to see the size of my composition and also see the text in this window. So let's go over to our animation. I'm going to select the null and the motion magic text. Go over to this comp, 
paste, press R for the null and I'm going to take that to zero. Let's move over to 20 frames just so we know it in the center. I'm going to align this and then I'm going to right click, create a new solid and I'm going to make this 1920 by 1080p and press OK. Drop this to the back, transparency, let's take this right down and let's select all these, right click and make them a guide layer for now. So from here I can start drawing my lines and I'm going to lock these layers so we can't actually select them, hide the null and let's go over to the pen tool and I'm going to start drawing some lines. Now I want to change the stroke up to about 24 and then press U and U twice and add a trim paths to this. Now I've just switched off the text so that we can go to the beginning and I'm going to drop down the trim paths and keyframe the start and end. Then I'm going to move over about 23 frames and add some keyframes there. Just going to drag up on the start so it's 100% and then we just need to do the same to the end. Drag that off. Then like we did with the motion elements just move these over and I'm going to do this a bit more than the others let's say about seven frames select all the keyframes press F9 to easy ease them we're going to do something a bit different here we want to create a bit of a pointed kind of look to this so I'm going to drag back animation to these lines close the graph editor twirl that up and now we can just duplicate these. Let's turn our text back on, move forward so we can actually see the line and then we can move these around in different positions. The other thing you want to do is just select a few of these, add a fill so that we can do the same thing as before and just change it to black so that we can actually change these in our compositions to any two colors we want. The other thing that we need to do is actually just offset these so as we animate them, they will come in at different speeds. I'm going to duplicate these up and then just offset a whole bunch of these and I'll see you back in this composition. Okay, so I'm back here and I've turned off the text and what I have is a whole bunch of layers. And if I just move this up, you can see I duplicated about nine different layers here. What we can do is come back to our main composition and let's rename this composition to motion lines. Drop this below the text and then I want to copy the rotation from the null. So press R, control C, paste this onto the motion lines. You can get the same rotation on this. Then I'm going to offset this to around about, I think that looks pretty good. And then add a tint effect. And what I want to do is add, let's say it's nice light blue to this. And then let's just pick that pink from the composition. Let's just hit play and see how everything comes together. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, take a look at either of the two videos popping up on the screen right now. Keep animating and until next time.